Hey, this is Annex, and in this well, tutorial or walkthrough, I'm going to show you my setup, so the hardware I use and also how I integrate the hardware into Ableton, and then how I use that hardware in Ableton uh, with a different MIDI in and also with an audio in. Uh, so it's going to be a little different because I'm going to take a video of my room first, of my studio, and then I'm going to sit down again at this spot and show you how it's interfaced with Ableton. So you should be able to still hear me now, and I'm going to put a video on top of here, like this. So this is the table where my main setup is. And I have my old computer that I do weird stuff on that I don't want to mess up my new computer with. <laughs> so just in case I mess something up, I'm not messing up the good one. So this is just like my burner laptop. Um, then I have this keyboard here and I'll put the names to all this stuff in a link in the description. But this is a Nectar keyboard and it's just so I can sit at my computer and still have a keyboard and not have to go back to my uh, real piano behind me. Uh, this thing here is a Novation launch control. So I use this if I'm playing live or if I'm working with like a small number of tracks when I'm producing. So it has the volume shifters for eight tracks. And on the bottom, you can also solo and you can mute. And you do that with these here. And you can also record arm the tracks. And this is fully integrated with Ableton. So if you have this, you don't have to do any additional setting up. So everything you do here is mirrored in Ableton. And these are two sends. So it gives you send A and send B. And the default in Ableton is Send A is reverb and send B is delay, but you can put them to whatever you want. And these are the pannings per track. So moving it from left to right for these eight tracks. And you move across your different tracks in your Ableton by just using this um, track select. And it goes back and forth that way. And I can show you in a second how that works. Um, this is just my, obviously my regular typical keyboard. It's ergonomic, but yeah, it's there. Uh, this is my laptop. On my laptop stand that cost me like very little money but it's really really worth it um, these are my monitors so it's a yeah white noise special edition because they're whites usually they're like uh, black and yellow but I didn't like that so I paid a little extra for these and it looks nice um, this is my webcam which is not so interesting for your audio setup but if you want to live stream um, I take the video from this webcam and it's just connected with a, a USB. So I have the video from the webcam, but I have the audio from actually my microphone or my computer as an input. So where the USB goes is to here. So this is a powered USB hub, I guess. It's from Anchor and it's really good. Um, I guess they also used to make batteries too, but they got really hot and like melted. So <laughs> this thing also gets pretty hot, um, but it hasn't melted yet. So it works really, really well. Um, it's powered because it actually plugs into the wall. So it has this like AC out or whatever. And then it has this other part, which is like one USB in to my computer. So the things that I plug into here are my MIDI devices, except for my piano. Um, which I'll talk about in a second. So what you're hearing me on now is this, this, this microphone here, and this is whatever, just a cheap microphone because I don't use it to record yeah, singing or anything. Um, so it, it picks up everything like my computer fan, and that's also what you hear, but it works good enough for this streaming stuff. Uh, so what this is connected to, so this is an audio in. Uh, this is my um, audio interface. It's Steinberg. It's actually, it's quite a nice one. Um, you can get nicer ones, but if you're starting, there's no point really. So this just does what it promises. Uh, there's two audio ins and one MIDI in. So this first audio in is from my microphone. So this connects via jack into here. And then it has a kind of a volume control for that. So you can turn the volume on that audio input up or down. And on the second audio input, I have it's mono, and it's from my base station two. And it also has a yeah this volume adjust for the base station two. So when I'm not using it, I turn it all the way down, 
Um, it also has a um, connection to my monitors. So this is the line, so left and right. This connects to my monitors here. And when I have my monitors, when I have my microphone on, I have my monitors off because otherwise it just, yeah, it's gonna pick up all the information from the microphone and have like a really crazy feedback loop and you can't work that way. So what I have here is this is the out for my monitors. This, uh, yeah, this one here. So that's turned off all the way now because I'm just using my microphone. And this one here is the out for my headphones. So right now when I sit down at my desk, I put my headphones on and then I can have my microphone, but I can also still hear the sound coming from the computer. And it also gives you an option this way to mix the input or the DAW. So if like I wanted to hear the audio from this base station too, while I was still yeah doing something in my DAW, I could adjust this here. But that only makes a difference if there's like huge uncontrollable lag in your DAW that you can't get rid of. Um, but in my case, I got around that. So the other thing I have here is, so this USB just plugs it in to the wall. Or sorry, this is the out to the computer. It's just a typical, yeah, USB. And this DC plugs it into the wall is the power source. This in here, so this MIDI in, uh, it connects to my Roland piano that's at the other side of the room. So I have like a 10 meter MIDI cable that goes like all the way down here across the floor there and onto my piano. Uh, so this was like, I don't know, some electric piano from the year 2002, but it works fine still. Uh, so when I sit here, like I'll play in my chords or whatever. And then I'll use my cheat sheet here to like remember what the chords are. So like if I'm working in F minor, I can use this for chord progressions because these are the different, yeah, chords in the key of F minor. And so I'll play this in and it has the MIDI being recorded to the computer again. And it does that through this MIDI that I just showed you. So this MIDI in, that's all it's doing. So it's not actually capable of outputting audio from that piano, it just outputs the MIDI. And then the VST, so what is it, the Virtual Synthetic Instrument, on the DAW, so on the computer, is actually what plays, so it's actually what makes the sound. Okay, so there's audio out here, or audio in, I guess, is from the base station too, and that's this thing. So this is a nice hardware synth, and it's really modern and it's pretty easy to use, although I haven't figured it out really well yet. Um, but this is connected um, with the audio there, with the mono. So because it's, I'm sit down now, because it's a, a bass instrument, uh, I only really need mono. So yeah, if it's like in the higher frequencies, you need more stereo, but for this, yeah, I don't care and I actually want it in mono. So this means that it's in one channel instead of two channels. So this, um, yeah, audio is connected to my audio interface. But I can also control this with MIDI. So this is what this cable is, this blue one. And this is connected to my USB hub here. So this is how I send MIDI information, so the notes on which keys should be played or which are being played, back to this device. So I can hear this device play when I input MIDI notes on the computer. And that would look like, for example, here. So these are the MIDI notes that I could get um, to be output to this hardware. And then I hear the audio through this cable going back into the DAW. <laughs> so that's what I hear it on. So it's a little bit complex, but yeah, the system works. So um, yeah, the other thing I have here obviously is the Ableton Push 2. I'm sure you've seen this if you use Ableton. Um, yeah, I use this for working, so for triggering clips in the sessions and also for working in chords if I want something like nice and neat in chords. And you can also use it for like, uh, yeah, drum and percussion setups and drum racks. Um, for me, like this way, it's just kind of like a nice overall controller to use for anything what I'm doing in my production. Um, so there is a way, so there's two different ways you control the volumes on your tracks. One of the ways is in this mix here, so on the push and then you see the volumes on your tracks up at the top. But this, you can't really go back and forth to this. 
uh, between this and your playing, like it's not a very easy way to work. So that's why I have this push together with the Novation launch control. So if I'm playing, I would use both of those. So I would have like, and you can see this in my videos that I recorded, like my live sets. So I'll have like the, the launch, the Novation launch control like here on my left hand side so I can control volume and sends with that. And then I have the push here in front of me so I can control the, the triggering in the sessions that way. Okay, so now you know how my room looks and you know how it's set up. Um, this thing behind me is just a mixer. So that's just what I use for DJing. I also have it integrated into my computer, but it's not important for production, really. Um, so I'm not going to talk about that, but I'm going to go into the DAW now and show you how I have these different things set up. Okay, so I think you should still be able to hear me this way. Um, yeah, so I have these instruments, so these different hardwares, they're assigned to different channels. Uh, so the first one I'm going to show you here is with this Nectar. So this was with a kind of smaller keyboard on my desk here. Oh, they're all super loud. Okay, so I have this, uh, let's take a step back. So I'm showing you the preferences now. And in audio, I have the audio input device is my line. So my yeah, audio interface. And that input is going to be both the uh, audio from my microphone and the mono audio from this base station that I showed you. So that's the input. And the output device is, is just my line. So it outputs it to my audio interface and to that, I show you, I have connected my headphones and also my monitors. And then I control the mix, how much it goes to either of those by using actually the physical buttons on the audio interface. So that's my input and my outputs. Um, the buffer size is really important, especially if you're playing live, because you can get a lot of latency if it's too high, but if it's too low, you can get a lot of cracking and static. So you want to play around with it and find a nice yeah, what works for you for what you're doing, for how many layers and how much CPU you require, but also how much your computer can handle. Um, yeah, so my computer is pretty fast and I also assign MIDI channels and I'm not playing like three things at once. So I can have this relatively low here, uh, but just play around with these three options. And then I'll give you the overall latency, which means how much the delay is between when you press a button and when you hear it uh, coming through the DAW in your headphones. So with the uh, other thing, so this is with the uh, link in the MIDI. So these are the control surfaces I have that I showed you. And to be able to both um, hear something being played on your instrument and also receive information from the instrument, you want to have both, it, you want to have them as an input and an output. Uh, so that's how I work with the base station too, uh, because I can send MIDI information to it, but I can also receive audio from it. And I also like doing that with the uh, push because then I can see the lights light up uh, on my notes. So to be able to see which chords are actually playing. And that's kind of cool. Okay, so you also want to assign these instruments to um, MIDI channels or tell the tracks exactly where they're getting the information from. You don't have to, but it makes a huge difference in how fast it works because the Ableton has to think a lot less to know where to grab that information from. So like this is the, the nectar so this is the short keyboard that i have and i have a midi in so first i want to have monitor either auto or in so in means i can only hear from this and auto would be i could actually play to it as well um, so the midi from is from this impact so from my keyboard and this is all channels on the keyboard so all of the keys i could possibly play on it um, i think maybe it's assigned, yeah, okay, channel 16 within that. That's fine. Uh, so when I have this monitor is in, I don't have to arm the track to be able to hear what's coming out of it. Uh, whereas if I have auto, I would have to arm it. So press this button at the bottom here. And for me, it's nice to have this keyboard here because I played piano before. So I, to be able to understand the chords, I really just have to like sit down 
and do them. Okay, so this one is another instrument, it's a violin, and I have it set from the push. So I also have this MIDI from, you see the push here. I have it on, yeah, everything is on the first port, not port two. I actually don't know what my port two is, <laughs> but I don't touch it. So I only go with, uh, yeah, this one. And then I'll again have the monitors in. I'll turn the track on. And then I can play chords really easily with the note view on my push. And I have the key set to E minor here. So this means, you can watch my other tutorial about this, but in a, the gist of it means that these blue buttons are the root note of your scale, of your key. And then you can make little triads really easily. And if you want to record, you arm the track and you do it that way. that's not the purpose of this tutorial, so go watch the other one if you're interested. Uh, and then I'll record the MIDI notes this way. Uh, so this one I have set up is the piano. So this is where I have the inputs. Uh, if I go over and walk to my piano and then I play these keys in it, it's going to record in the same way that either uh, this would, so this uh, nectar, this small keyboard, or the push would. So it just basically records the MIDI notes and I hear it as a output through the yeah, the VST I have on. So in this case, I have Omnisphere. But I would have to go and play my piano once again. Good. So you probably heard that double, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so this next one is the last one, I'm, second last one I'm going to talk about. So this is the Base Station 2, and I think I'll do a follow-up tutorial on this because this is interesting to focus on in itself. So I have the MIDI from Base Station 2 as an input saying it's coming from this hardware. And I have all channels, monitors in. And then when I play on this instrument, Sorry, my, my microphone's picking up a lot of fan there. Uh, so when I play on this instrument, it's actually giving us the audio from this instrument that's generated on the instrument. And this is what it looks like if I recorded something from the bass station. So you just yeah do that in the same way if you were um, playing it and want to record it, uh, you change it to record here. So this would record the MIDI that you play from this, and then you send it as an audio out to a new track. So like to this track and have this as a, so this base station two MIDI goes out to an audio track and you record it that way. Uh, yeah, the other thing I have on here is the microphone. So I tell it uh, audio is from external because the external that we set is the uh, audio interface. So it's coming from uh, channel one on that audio interface. So remember I showed you on the left hand corner you had those two audio inputs. This one was on the left. So this is the number one and this base station is the yeah number two on that actually. So that's that was this. Um, yeah and so when you record audio here so same way I'm gonna way I'm gonna go on I am I I'm going to go monitor in here, and now you're hearing my voice through the DAW. With that horrible sound over it. So then this is how I could record audio in DAW from my voice. Yeah, so that was just a brief introduction to everything in my room and how it's set up. And I hope that was useful for you, and I hope it kind of made sense. Uh, if you have questions on this setup, leave them in the comments, but I'll also put links to all this stuff. And I'm really happy with all the stuff I bought. Um, I didn't like know how to use it right away, um, but that was part of the fun of it because I knew I already invested money in it, so I had to learn. Otherwise, it was just sitting collecting dust. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to learn anything else about this or about my setup or about production in general.